Hey guys, welcome to the next video on Python Thread Tutorials for Beginners. In the last video, we have seen how to use threading module to create threads in Python. Now in this video also, we are going to see how to create threads using threading module. But we are going to see in this video how to subclass from the thread class which is available inside the threading module and then create threads out of that class instance. So to start with, I have the same method which is print a poc which I want to call inside the thread. So now here after this uh, method, what I want to do is I want to create a class. So I'm going to create a class and the name of the class I'm going to give the name as my thread for example. And one thing we need to do here is we need to subclass from the thread class from the threading module so we are going to just call first of all threading dot thread so we are subclassing from the thread class now inside this my class first of all we are going to define the init method so let's uh, define this init method and in this init method we are going to pass two arguments same as this print epoch function so first argument will be the name of the thread and the second argument will be the delay so let's provide these two arguments first is the name and second is the delay now after this inside this init method we need to call the parents init method which is threading dot thread dot init so we are going to just call threading dot thread dot underscore underscore init method which is going to call the parent init method which is threading dot thread right now once you have done that we can just simply define some uh, local member variable for the name so first of all self dot name is equal to name and self dot delay is equal to delay so now once we have our member variables what we need to do next is we need to override a method called run which is available inside the thread class in threading module so i'm going to just define a run method and we are going to override this so first of all what does this run method do so the run method is the entry point for the thread now in the previous video if you remember we have called the start method on the thread class right so the start method starts the thread by calling this run method so under the hood start method calls this run method so if we override this run method that means when we call the start method from the thread class this run method is going to be called so now we can do some logging here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to print uh, first of all uh, start thread and then i'm going to print end thread now between the start thread and end thread logging i'm going to call the print epoch function and this print epoch function is going to take two arguments which is name so i'm going to just pass the self dot name which we have assigned to the member variable and second is the self dot delay so once again when we call the start method on the instance of this my thread class this run method is going to be called by the start method automatically because we are subclassing from the threading dot thread class now once we have our run method and we have created the init method we can create some instances of my class so i'm going to create some instances for example t1 is equal to my thread and then we are going to pass those two arguments first is the name so let's say the name is thread one and the delay we want to provide here is let's say one second because this delay is going to go to the print epoch method which is this one right 
once again we are going to create the second instance let's say t2 and once again we are going to call the my thread class which we have subclassed from the thread class and once again we are going to give these two argument first is the thread so this time i'm going to name it as thread2 and the delay i'm going to give here is two second let's say and now after the instance is created we can uh, call the start method and the join method on these two instances so let me just call t1 dot start and then we are going to call the t2 dot start and once we have the start which is going to start the threads we are going to just call the join method and by now you already know what this join method do which is to wait for the thread to be completed so i'm going to just call the join method on t2 also and let's run this script and let's see what happens so i'm going to run the script and you can see first of all start thread has been called which is from the logging of this print method and then thread 1 is printed and the epoch time is printed and then thread 2 is printed and the epoch time is printed because we have given the one second delay for the thread 1 so thread 1 will be iterated faster than thread 2 because we have provided the delay of two second for thread 2 and one second for thread 1 as soon as the thread ends we can see this print statement which is end thread and after the end of the thread 2 we can see this print statement which is end thread 2 we can also print here so let's print some more things here so we can print the name of the thread so i'm going to just write self dot uh, name and we are going to do the same for the end thread also so i'm going to just print here also self dot name so we will know which thread is starting and which thread is ending once again i'm going to run the program and now you can see start thread thread 1 so thread 1 is started and then thread 2 is started and you can see first of all thread 1 is ended and at last thread 2 is ended so this is how you can subclass from the thread class which is available inside the threading module now inside this threading module there are some special methods which we are going to see now so the first method is so let me just uh, go after this uh, start of the threads so here what i'm going to do is first of all i'm going to use the print function and inside this print function i'm going to call the threading module and there are some special uh, methods for example first of all we are going to see what is the active count of threads so what are the number of threads which are there inside this program this is going to print the number of threads now the second method which i'm going to show you is the threading first of all let me just call the threading dot we are going to call the current thread so this is going to print the current thread which is active right now and third method which i want to show here is threading dot enumerate and this enumerate method is going to enumerate the number of threads which are active so let's run this program once again and let's see what happens so i'm going to just run this uh, program and first of all you will see three is printed using this print statement which is threading dot active count so active count is going to give you the number of threads and you already know that we have created two threads and one main thread is already available so total number of threads are three here which is printed now the current thread here this print statement prints this output which is the main thread so right now at the time of this uh, print statement main thread is active now this enumerate method as i said is going to enumerate over all the threads which are available so main thread is available and then we have created thread one which is this one this is the name of the thread one and then when i scroll here 
you can see thread 2 is available so total three threads are available main thread thread 1 and thread 2 so these method you can use to just find out how many threads are there what is the current thread thread and you can also enumerate over all the threads there is one more method so i'm going to call this method here and i'm going to print it inside the print function and this time i'm going to use the instances so t1 dot and there is a method available here which is get name which comes from the thread class and because we are subclassing from the thread class this um, and because we are subclassing from the thread class this get name is available inside the my thread class also and same we are going to do here also so print and then t2 dot get name so this is going to give you the name of the thread by default so i'm going to just run this uh, script once again and you can see this is going to print thread one and this is going to print thread two now you might wonder why this name is thread one and thread two because this get name method is going to give the value of self dot name which we have assigned using this name argument so this name is overwritten in the subclass which is my thread class and that's why it's giving us thread one and thread two name which we have provided if we change this name let's say t1 and t2 and once again we run the code you can see the name also changes to t1 and t2 so this is how you can subclass from the thread class which is available inside the threading module and we have also seen some of the method which are available inside the threading module which are useful to us so that's it for this video. I will see you in the next video.